experts took on the challenge of developing a toy for a young hockey enthusiast in the school setting. Now, anybody who knows a young athlete knows that they love two main things. They love to eat and they love to compete. Now, we decided, we decided to fuse those two ideas together and create a toy for the lunchroom setting. So our idea is to create the snack and play. It's a, it's a convenient food container that fits inside a lunchbox and it also has a two-player hockey-themed game on the top. Now, we took the idea of pinball, expanded it to include two players, and put it in a hockey setting. So this type of toy, this type of product is unique to the market. There really aren't any other products out there that combine these two concepts. So our intended user is a child who enjoys competitive sports, both watching and playing. This also is, fits very well into the cafeteria setting in school, because this intended user would probably be one to pack their lunch. And during lunchtime, the user is usually with their friends, so this encourages the multiplayer aspect of the game. So picture the snack and play. You've got your food, you've got your games, and you've got your friends. What more could a young hockey player in school want? The Snack and Play has two main components, the base and the lid. And the game component is entirely contained on the lid and actually functions even when the base is not attached. So it operates kind of like a double pinball machine where buttons on both sides and you hit the sticks and they move forward. Um, we like to say it's kind of like an empty net situation where the defenders are standing at the crease ready for the, the slap shot. The game is controlled by four buttons, two for each player, and each button controls one hockey stick. Underneath the ice, as we like to call it, it, there are springs that when you push the button forward, the spring expands and allows the stick to twist. And then when you release the spring, this hockey stick springs back to its original default location. flexible enough so that it doesn't require much force when actually playing the game. Having both buttons function in the same manner reduces the overall cognitive processing required in order to play the game. The control mapping is simple. If you push the left button, the left stick will move. The location of the buttons is also conducive to thumb usage, which means when a child is playing with it, they can keep their wrists straight. With the way we have designed it, this toy is compatible for all children, not just the right hand. We've inset the surface of the ice below the net so that when a puck rolls into the net, it clearly identifies that a goal has been scored. So in order to get the puck back out, you simply turn it upside down and the puck will fall out and roll back around on the ice. The Human Factors team also had concerns about the puck getting into unplayable areas, for instance, this area behind the net where the sticks can't reach that far back. So to remedy that, we simply added a barrier in the lid, the clear plastic covering lid, so that when a puck rolls that direction, it hits the barrier and actually goes back towards the net itself. The base and the lid are attached in a simple interface design, just like most food containers are. It is loose enough so that the child will be able to open the container, but still tight enough so that the food can stay fresh. An additional attribute of the game is the rounded edge design. The rounded edge protects the child's wrist from any injury during gameplay during those intense slap shot moments. Instructions are provided in order to explain that the base of the toy is dishwasher and microwave safe. Please remember that before using any type of container that touches food to wash before your first use. In order to make the snack and play, we had to use three different types of plastic. The first type of plastic we use is polypropylene. This plastic was used to make the base of the container through thermoforming and the base of the lid through injection. This type of plastic was chosen because it is food safe, which is the most important thing, and it is also a very durable plastic. 
The second type of plastic we use is polystyrene. The polystyrene is used as the lid on top of the game to hold the pieces from flying everywhere. The third type of plastic we use is ABS plastic. ABS plastic was used for the game pieces themselves, which are also made through injection molding. ABS plastic was chosen because it takes color very well and it also is very durable for impact. So when you have the game hitting each other, it's less likely to break. So the cost of all these materials, verified by CES EduPack, um, was 25 cents. The cost of manufacturing, including the assembly process, was $1.22. So that brings our total production cost to $1.47. So at the cost of $1.50, fast food restaurants everywhere can provide a fun and functional toy to children of all ages. Hockey enthusiasts will be excited by the simple design of the game. And our team has also considered expanding it to include other sports like soccer, baseball, basketball, but we're sure that in any case, the snack and play will be cafeteria's next most wanted.